Welcome to the worldwide free seminar of the Family Dog Project, live from Budapest. The event is proudly sponsored by Purina. These dogs are trained to be completely motionless, in a narrow tube basically, um, so that we can check how their brain responds to different types of stimuli, sounds, strange sights, whatever stimuli we can show them and check their brain online. These dogs learn to put down their head, these dogs learn to wear headphones and also they learn that motionless really means motionless. When you are motionless you are not supposed to move any part of your body. It's it's a bit more than what the first concept of motionless is for a dog. Uh, I would like to show you uh, a dog which is in the process of training. They learn that this narrow tube is a place where it's basically fun to be. Uh, and this is, this is the tube, a very strong magnet actually, a very strong electromagnet in which we are able to measure their brain activity. They have to be in this small tube um, for several minutes and it's very important that this whole process of training, which is not a simple or short training, it's a long training. Um, it's, a, it's based on positive reinforcement methods uh, and well, not just that. Okay, positive reinforcement in the sense that uh, uh, these dogs are really praised and stroked for how nice they are, but this is not all there is. We also see that these dogs are just really learning that, well, this scanner bed is the place to be. Now we are trying to test the black dog, but just watch out for the white one, who, who really want, who is already, I mean, trained or um, in the process of understanding that, of course, the scanner bed is the place to be. This is really fun and, uh, and he just does everything he can to be the next to be tested. Um, this is important because as, as we realized this goes like this, uh, we also made this part of the training. So this, this is the so-called model rival aspect of, of uh, the training. Um, the jealousy, the rivalry, the excitation of this dog is basically used, um, used to keep him awake and interested in being actually the next and to be happy to come again and again. You see, after all, he won. He can be the next and he can be tested. Uh, and this is a success for him and this is a success for us as well, of course. I will, uh, I will talk about brain imaging study in which, we, uh, in which we tested different types of sounds, how different types of sounds, stressing or non-stressing sounds, affect brain responses. So this would be, this would be one, one type of the sounds we used, I don't know how, how clearly you heard it, this was, uh, this was a firework sounds from fireworks that uh, are one of the typical stressing sounds for many dogs. Or here is another one. Also, also pretty stressy for many dogs. Uh, but there are very different sounds which are also stressful uh, for, for people, for dogs, for, uh, for individuals. <laughs> but similar in the sense that they also make us somehow feel scared or uncomfortable, well, stressed in general. Such sounds, yeah, such sounds can come from humans as well. Uh, but not every sound that comes from a human or from a dog is so scary or stressful. You can say in a moment that this was a sound from a dog, but this was not an aggressive or angry dog sound. 
This was a playful dog which, which was having fun with a ball, with, with its owner, with another dog. We don't know that. Although you probably don't understand every word of what you just heard, you realize that this is speech. This is normal speech, a phone call of, uh, of someone uh, who is not very stressed at this specific moment. Do you know what this is? A washing machine. A washing machine sound, which is, in a way, very similar to, to some other sounds you heard, in a way it's similar to an angry dog, but still, you are pretty sure it was not a stressy sound when you hear it. Yeah. The feel of this last sound is far from very natural, although this is a water stream that you hear. Also, very different types of uh, sound. We also often hear these types of sounds, and what we clearly can say is that a washing machine and the water stream are common not only in that they both have some water in it, but also that they are not social and not stressy sounds. So this is how we classify the sounds uh, we used as stimuli in this study, in which we wanted to uh, differentiate brain responses to stressing sounds and to non-stressing sounds. So these were the stressing social sounds, these were the stressing non-social sounds, for these and other similar ones. Then we had non-stressing social sounds and also the non-stressing non-social sounds. Okay, so when I uh, say in a minute again non-stressing non-social, I just think of a washing machine and then you know what I'm talking about. Okay, but we are doing a brain experiment. The brain experiment, we look into the brains of dogs. That's what makes us excited. That's what we work on uh, with all those training procedures and long hours of training the dog to actually stay there. So we should have some idea about what will happen in the brain when the brain is processing stressing sound or a social sound or a non-stressing or a non-social sound. Well, here are the two basic uh, predictions we have, the two arrows, based on human literature and based on some animal literature, we guess that the more stressing a sound is, the stronger the brain response. But we don't actually have any uh, clear idea about it, and we don't know what part of the brain would do so if they would do so at all. For the social or non-social distinction, we also have this idea based on um, human studies and some animal studies that, that our brains are social, that we are, in general, more excited about social sounds, that our brain responds stronger to social sounds than to non-social sounds. So we would, we would expect stronger brain responses to stressing sounds and to social sounds. But there is something else. Uh, now what that can be? The funny thing about the brain is that we have two halves of it. So there is the left half of the brain, no, I should do it like the left half of the brain and the right half of the brain. The brain hemispheres. And there are some very interesting functions, some things that our brains can do, which happen to be asymmetric in terms of brain, uh, so, uh, of, of how our brain processes uh, these functions. There are, for example, language is a typical example uh, of a function. Language processing is typically based on left hemisphere involvement. Your left hemisphere is most probably much more involved in, in a conversation you are engaged in than your right hemisphere. Um, the other way around for, um, for social sounds in general, social in the sense that uh, vocalizations, voices from, from uh, other people or, or, or from other species, which are not typically language sounds, but also stressy very stressy sounds, or not, not only sounds, stressing stimuli or negative stimuli are often associated with more right hemisphere involvement in processing than, uh, than non-stressing ones. So here was the other prediction we had. We expected that stressing stimuli would elicit more righty, right biased, uh, 
brain responses while social stimuli would elicit more lefty, left biased brain responses if this distinction between social and non-social stressing and non-stressing indeed works for dogs, for dog brains, for dog listeners, as we expect based on our ideas, because it's of course the case that we don't really have the chance to ask dogs, do you feel you heard something social now or you just heard something stressy? The real response we have is this, this pattern of brain responses. Interestingly, what we get, okay, so this is now brain actually, what you see there. It's the left half of the brain and that's the right half of the brain. And the yellow blobs show those parts of the brain, auditory regions in the dog brain, which seem to be much more responsive to social sounds, including dog vocalizations. You know what? I will not need this. It's much nicer, right? Uh, shall I just repeat everything I said in the last five minutes without this annoying noise? Yeah? Stress can be uh, based on very simple, basic noises. Oh, finally, we don't use this simple tone of noise. Okay. But, uh, but now we have uh, this pattern of yellow blobs, which says that the dog brain is more interested, well, more interested, more responsive, more sensitive to social sounds, including speech, dog vocalizations, uh, or angry shoutings from humans as well, than uh, to non-social sounds. The other aspect of this, this figure is what you don't see there. We don't find a similar pattern for stressing versus non-stressing sounds. When we ask the brain, okay, what, what parts are more interesting in stress in general versus in, in non-stressing non sounds versus non-stressing sounds, we don't get anything. So we decided to split this stimuli into non-social and social, and then a very interesting pattern arose. For non-social sounds, so the washing machine, the fireworks, we find indeed what we expected, that stressing sounds are much more exciting for the brain than non-stressing sounds. You get a stronger brain response for a fireworks than for a washing machine. Wow. But for social sounds, it's the other way around. Stressing sounds, like a shouting person or an angry dog, seem to elicit lower brain response than non-stressing social sounds. Why can that be? Now, of course, we have no idea why can that be, but one guess is that, uh, that non-stressing sounds include speech, human speech, and, uh, well, dog, dog blah blah dog vocalization um, in, in playful context. In a way, human speech and also this playful dog uh, vocalization contains very important, very relevant, and much more social information in a way, maybe. And, uh, and dogs, our, our participant dogs especially, learn that human speech is very important to them. And, uh, and in, in, the, in that context in which they are living, uh, they just work better uh, if, uh, if they are tuned to human speech. So our wide guess is that uh, human speech is what uh, makes a bigger effect here than, uh, than what the social stress uh, on the other side. A very interesting part uh, of this uh, pattern of results is that uh, we asked dog owners for each of the dogs uh, how bank feeding their dog is, how much they are afraid of bang, bang type of uh, stressing sounds. And we found that the general auditory brain response pattern, uh, so not specific responses for stressing sounds, but the general auditory brain response is lower in those dogs which are not fearing dogs than in the dogs which are more or very much fearing dogs. Okay, so in a way um, we can link individual um, patterns of fear to sound sensitivity or sound responsivity in the brain. And then this left and right story that I was already talking about, uh, we asked which type of sound is more 
left hemisphere biasing, which type of sounds are more right hemisphere biasing, and uh, whether we can see some pattern that is similar to what we see in humans in general. Uh, surprisingly, we found that for all types of uh, sounds, we get a right hemisphere bias or nothing. So the first two are the nothing. Uh, these are uh, the social sounds, non-stressing and stressing social sounds elicit very, very little uh, non-significant right bias. But the non-social sounds, and especially the stressing non-social sounds, are clearly right hemisphere biased in, in dogs. So non-social sounds and in general stressing sounds elicit a right hemisphere bias in dogs, very similarly to what was found in behavioral studies and uh, what we guess uh, from some slightly similar human studies. Uh, OK, just wrap up very quickly. Uh, how do dogs process social and non-social stress then? Uh, we found two patterns uh, of, uh, um, of activity that is worth mentioning in a, in a take-home message slide like this. Increased brain responses were found to social sounds in general, to stressing non-social sounds like those bangs, but also for non-stressing social sounds like human speech. And interestingly, we found increased brain response to all sounds in the more fearing individuals. And the other pattern, pattern is that a right hemisphere processing bias, so hemispheric asymmetry for the right side was found for non-social and for stressing sounds. OK, so what is then the take home message? What is it what we learned from this? Uh, maybe it's that uh, stress has many different types, many different faces, and stress responses in dogs, just as in humans, uh, can be very variable, dependent on what type of stress we are talking about. Still, excitingly, there seem to be very general brain response patterns that can somehow predict how fearing a dog is of specific stressing sound types. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for the talk and thank you.